Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's episode, we want to talk about full moon in Pisces. And full moon in Pisces will happen in September 10. Today is September 2nd. This is our allergy season. We have a swollen eyes. Dave has a red eyes and hope everyone's okay. If you have an allergy, please take care of yourself. And before we actually start, I want to give you a quick introduction to ourselves a little more. So this is our website. We have uh, astrology and tarot reading and your birth chart or your family, your kids or your any family member, your loved one, your boyfriend, girlfriend, we can do it. And also we have business uh, consulting as well. So you can find us in truetrue.ca. I'm going to just show you. Bear with me. I will go into full moon in Pisces. Also, you can find me in TikTok. This is my TikTok. Oops. <laughs> And I do have an Etsy shop. I sell some incense, ritual stuffs. So this is how you find me. And let's dive in to full moon episode. All right, so here is the Pisces full moon chart for Ottawa, September 10th. 2022 at 6 a.m. And if you live um, near Ottawa or on the East Coast, then this will be this will apply to you. If you live anywhere else in the world in a different time zone, then you would have to adjust the the time, and then the ascendant will change. And a lot going on in this full moon actually. So in this uh, chart, the moon sun is here, moon is here. So the full moon, naturally, they are opposing each other. So let's look at moon and sun separately. So moon is a 17 degree in Pisces. Sun is in 17 degree in Virgo. That makes the opposition. The placement of them are in second decan. So decan is the system. Mm -hmm. So let's look at just a basic astrology wheel. You can see here that it starts with Aries and it goes all the way around to Pisces. And each of these houses here, they're subdivided into three. And I'll show you here that for Aries, you can see that um, there's one deacon, one deacon here, second deacon here, third deacon here, and so on for every single sign. And each deacon is ruled by a different planet. So in this case, we're looking at Pisces second deacon and we're looking at the nine of cups and it's ruled by Jupiter. And the sun would be in the second deacon of Virgo, which is Venus in Virgo, nine of pentacles. And then this deacon system is called Childian. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is just a repeat uh, version of the personal planet. Mm -hmm. And this Childian system has a perfect correspondent with the Terran astrology. We're actually uh, working on teaching people what is it because there's so many different viewpoints of astrology and there's a duet deacon system as well. There's also astrology deacon system shared with the same uh, third deacon and brings the similar result actually but this um childian system because of this comes with astrology and you know like a tarot has all the images right so that when you put that which looks which goes and which deacon and you can grasp the energy of the placement more easily so as they mentioned that let's look at the second deacon. So they are both in the second deacon, right? Um, how does the 
tarot card looks like. So Pisces looks like this. And the Virgo looks like that. So nine of cups and nine of pentacle. They're, they're the card in this decan and it looks amazing. And number nine is about the completion. Number nine always bring the um, abundance. So let's look at nine of cups. So this is about the material happiness, right? So that when the Jupiter comes in the Pisces, it's really happy situation. It's a barrier against the bad or sadness and pain and disappointment. It brings all the abundance in, in our life. And cups is about our emotion. Sometimes it's about the mo money too, because when we actually call money as a currency, currency is about the water, right? So water carries the mon money. So that's why it's the money and the emotion. And this is all about wish fulfillment, happy, happy relationship, success, and all the satisfaction. And look at this being, you know, this person looks so satisfied. I stocked up everything what I need. It has a confidence, right? And let's look at the nine of pentacle. So nine of pentacle is also really positive card. And this is about the uh, material gain. And this lady here, she, she harvested and she's surrounded by all the uh, material wealth around her and she has all the luxury she can access, right? So this is a Venus in Virgo and surprisingly, uh, this is a Virgo, Venus's uh, fall placement because this is the 180 degree from her um, home sign. However, Venus is always benefit planet even though she's in the uncomfortable place, she still brings the material gain. And this is such a so be beautiful, peaceful, solitude energy. It brings the comfort, security, and also protection from the harsh realities of the outside of world. So the placement itself looks really, really nice. However, when this card is negatively aspected, then you're too much focusing on this stat status and attention and you just want to material wealth only. You don't look for any um, emotional satisfaction. You just want money, 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 money. So overall, um, this card has a negative meaning of the dissatisfaction or overindulged. And when we look at this card, uh, when this card is a negatively aspected, this is about the you need for the direction and need for some caution. And or you feel trapped and you're building kind of lifestyle that you, you want to, but it's really hard to maintain. So that's the meaning of this uh, moon and sun, and they're opposing each other. Okay, let's look into this Jupiter in Pisces. So when Jupiter visiting Pisces, and remember, I'm gonna use the computer screen, Pisces is about the last sign. Is it, is, this is about the letting go. This is about to like, you know, dissolving everything what we have, just going within and right before the new beginning, right? So Jupiter is here means it's actually opening the portal. So this portal is actually from Jupiter and from the uh, Wheel of Fortune. So when this portal is opening, we have to either dump and go into the new world and or we're maybe entering into some kind of a problem. So remember this concept, okay? So let's back to uh, full moon in Pisces chart is here. So let's isolate Mars, sun and moon. So they're placed in here, Mars, sun 
and moon. So they're actually forming this T-square. And as you can see, Mars is getting a lot of pressure from a lot of planets right now. So what is really fascinating here is Mars in Gemini. And I made a video about this long transit, seven and a half month transit. If you didn't watch it, that video, please watch that. So the key message here is you shouldn't make any decision. This is about the trickster energy. This is kind of pressuring energy that you urge to make some kind of action because Mars is about the action oriented planet get it done kind of energy is a god of war. So sun and moon that whatever the positive energy from this, this card or negative side of this card is giving Mars to make sure you make some kind of decision. But I was emphasizing that don't make a decision. And when that T square happens, then the energy build up here and it comes down to the opposite side and we have a Sagittarius here. So as you can see, you don't see anything, but um, in Canada, Urawa, this is our IC, this is a mid heaven, this is about the world stage. So. As a Canadian, um, we might have a, some kind of big news coming out. It might make stress to a lot of Canadian people. This is my interpretation. So the time zone is really similar to New York as well. So we might see some kind of news or some kind of violence, some kind of confusion energy, just stressing out us to urge to make a decision or take one side either here or there. But just keep in mind that see this uh, my interpretation as just entertainment standpoint and just watch all the whatever happening around this time. And also do, do your own research, you know, be curious mm -hmm. and look at everything, all the gossip, all the news, you know, all the Gemini qualities that are out there and really just um, just observe and watch and um, then you can make a decision after when Mars goes out of Gemini. Yeah, and let's actually look at a Canadian chart. Okay, so this is a Canadian chart, Canada's birthday. I use, um, which, which chart I'm using? Let's see, this is July 1st, 1867, Ottawa. And let's look at it. So the outside planet is a transiting and I cast the, the moment of the full moon and inside is Canada's birth chart. This is really interesting because a sun is a conjuncting north node, moon is a conjuncting south node and then there is the Jupiter is there and Venus is conjuncting Mars and Positing this Jupiter and there will be south node and also transiting north node and Uranus is conjuncting Pluto. This is really, really strong energy. This is kind of death and rebirth moment because the opposite sign we have Saturn and Saturn is chart ruler of the mid heaven. Mid heaven in the country's chart is about the government or the head of company or authority figure. So that is kind of releasing out. This is more emphasizing from the uh, previous moon cycle as well. And also I made a video about that too. If you wanna know more about it, please go ahead and watch. So this releasing of the head energy is emphasizing here. Also the Mars. Sun and Moon, the releasing point will be the Sagittarius. We uh, looked at it, right? So the release, releasing point from the Mars, the strong T-square, 
will be Sagittarius of our country's new believing system, new belief system, ideology. So this might be really interesting time, what's going to happen in uh, Canada as well. And one thing, another thing that I found very fascinating is that we have Mars here getting ready to trigger Venus in Gemini. And we have Chiron here is, is conjuncting Neptune. And what these two energies are doing is it's creating something called a Yod, which is two inconjuncts. And this Yod is pointing towards Saturn in Scorpio in the seventh house. And in a country, the seventh house, it represents the law. So, you know, and also people. Yeah, and the people and the uh, relationship with, uh, with the people and the law. So it would be very interesting what this finger of God or the Yod, um, you know, what the impact will be on the Canadian legal system. Okay, so now we're back to full moon chart. So another interesting thing in this full moon, we have Neptune right there. And I think I've mentioned so many times to uh, my clients and my friends and family and maybe few of uh, this YouTube video, Moon and Neptune conjunction is the hardest because uh, Neptune is gas kind of planet. Yeah. Because of that gassy, watery uh, surface. Foggy. Mm -hmm, yeah. It makes hard to see. It's very, very foggy. So it catches the illusion and has a, some kind of victimization energy into it. And this is right now, 17 degree is the moment of the moon, full moon, but Neptune is a sitting on 24 degree. This is pretty close because moon moves one degree every two hours. So um, within a couple hours later, Moon will meet the Neptune, Neptune, which can make everyone feel victimized or people might feel really melancholy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So this energy will happen. I don't think it's a couple of hours. It, oh, yeah, it's the same day. Yeah, it's the same day in the couple of hours because the moon happened really early in the morning yeah. in Canada. So by evening, right? Because we're looking at um, one degree every two hours. Mm -hmm. So seven degrees, we're looking at, you know, 14, 14 hours or so. 14 hours So in the later. evening, yeah, in the evening. So and the new, actually this full moon happening in seven in the morning. Six, six in the morning. Yeah, six yeah. in the morning. So yeah, like in the afternoon in when the evening evening yeah. 8 p.m ish yeah, yeah yeah and then this kind of melancholy martyr martyrism the martyrdom yeah. martyrdom yeah. that kind of energy will appear mm -hmm. and moon will keep progress from this energy and first we'll meet neptune and we'll meet jupiter jupiter and when I don't see this kind of strong energy, T-square, if I just see Moon and um, Jupiter. Jupiter conjunction in Aries, I would say, oh yeah, this, this will be really great time to start a new project or make a new good decision. If you want to just do something and you can act on it, right? Because uh, Aries is all about head first make a new decision or just start with regardless of any outcome but because of the all the t square and this mars in gemini you shouldn't make any decision because of this this will have a like retrograde motion yeah and just to clarify i mean you could definitely make like everyday decisions mm -hmm. right but just any major life impacting decision is better just to wait and just internalize that energy until Mars has moved out of Gemini. Yeah, but however, this moon, so probably by by that time, moon moves to um, Jupiter, it will be next day, uh, September 11. Then our emotion 
want to make some kind of decision based on what happened in the world or news or the law changing. But however, I, I want to just emphasize that hold your decision. And soon after, moon, progress moon, move, travel here will meet Chiron. And Chiron is all about health though, like a health wounded area. It can be our ch childhood, like trauma and things like that. So the moon is bringing that issue. And then Chiron is actually ruled by Virgo. Virgo is all about the health care as well. But uh, when we actually bring back this moon to moment of the full moon, sun is giving moon the, all the energy, shining light from the opposite sign, giving all the energy to moon. And you know what you, what you have to do. And moon is carrying this energy to other planet as it progress, keeping the messages, right? So when your emotion is really strong, when you go, when you don't go into the victimhood, when you don't like make a quick decision and when the moon reaches in the Chiron, maybe, you know, like uh, the healthcare or anything about your personal health, Health can be your financial health, your physical health, your mental health, what you need to do. So until then, don't make a quick decision. Just go within. And also, when you look at Chiron, it's been in Aries for quite some time. And when Chiron is in Aries, we're, we're looking at anything related to the head, anything related to um, our identity or sense of self. So it's really important that, you know, are you very clear on who you are as a person or are you um, being influenced by what you're watching on the news or what your peer group is telling you who you need to become? Because because it's really you want to be your authentic self and you want to question like, is this my true identity? Okay, let's look into um, Uranus in Taurus. So moon will travel. And then we'll finally meet uh, in Taurus and we have a uh, Uranus. And remember guys, moon is the trigger point. Moon is the activation planet in our everyday life because moon moves the fastest. So moon goes and carries all the message from the sun, the moment of the full moon, and then go here. And then here, because of Uranus is sitting here to wait moon to come to make sudden change. A sudden change. And, and m the North Node is here to bring in even more changes. So I actually mentioned about the other video and when Moon is activating North Node and the energy is uh, helping us to go into the right direction where humanity need to go and Uranus is a future-oriented planet and together is really, really bringing sudden change. And as you can see, North Node is here and we have a South Node. Oh, actually, we don't have a South Node here. Let's, can you actually put the South Node yeah, let's visible? Do let's do that. So on astro.com, um, when, when you enter in your birth information or the chart information, then you just go down here and you just click on True node, descending node, okay? And then you hit click show chart again, then it will show like that. So voila, you can see that there's a south node there, north node there. So when there's a south node here, it actually creating some kind of portal, all the energy become wicked. So in Vedic or ancient astrology, they uh, describe this north node as a dragon's head, like, Dragons head and the south node being dragons tail, but more like a dragon's um, releasing place because everything will get weakened. So imagine the head is just it, 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 and here go to like a shit 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 yeah shit. It, the the energy has to go somewhere mm -hmm. so, so 
this part will have a growing energy and this part have a weakening energy. Yeah, so if you look at the human body, mm -hmm. like um, the North Node would be like you're consuming something and then your body absorbs all the nutrients that it needs for the body to function. Mm -hmm. And then whatever is wasted, whatever your body no longer needs, it comes out through the South Node, right? So the dragon's tail is where all of the toxins will be released. And we're, we're expecting some kind of a uh, big change from um, the Uranus right next to North Node here because let me just Moon will travel and conjunct with everyone and then Uranus will bring the sudden change like thunderbolt kind of energy and whatever humanity need to go will push forward and whatever need to release will release and the portal here in the Scorpio South node we will dump everything here so we can expect that and also where you can see the energy uh, more clue and let's look at this energy so when moon conjunct or activating this Uranus and North Node energy and we previously talked about this energy will release a lot of um, unnecessary energy into the Scorpio but however let's look at the Saturn and the North Node Uranus and Moon's energy they are actually squaring each other so how I see this energy is what we want to do what we want to change because North Node is about where our humanity needs to go and Uranus is the future oriented so this is a super potent energy want to move certain direction but looks like the Saturn is uh, making hard the situation and Saturn is, is about uh, our authority figure it can be government because of Saturn is in Aquarius. Aquarius is about the group. It's about the community. Community. Yeah. It can be government. It can be um, you know, world, you know, basically. So that kind of restriction is opposing this new change we wanna make urgently because Uranus is, is about the quick and urgency kind of energy. Yeah, and Uranus also represents the people. And, um, and so Uranus naturally has this rebellious energy. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can see themes of rebellious people versus the, the government or, um, or, or um, community groups trying to put um, restrictions on the people. So this has been an ongoing theme for the past few years. And uh, I mean, it's, it's affecting the entire world. So, you know, this will be the last Uranus and Saturn square um, towards the end of this year and we'll see how this energy resolves and yeah just remember this energy people versus government people versus authority figure and lastly let's look at what moon goes into Mars so when moon conjunct with the Mars then Mars is already giving uh, all the all the Gemini to trickstering energy to make a decision but again Gemini is about to you know like use a curiosity energy to see all the possibility and all the sides and don't make a decision but Mars is tricking us and Moon is pressuring us to make a decision as well and what should we do with this energy right so when Mars conjunct with the Moon probably we have an urgency to make a decision however let's look at the gemini gemini is ruled by mercury mercury is now with the libra so they are trining right now so we can use mercury's energy to see what's the clue we can do so gemini I'm sorry, uh, Libra in uh, this decan, the first decan is actually Moon is visiting Libra. So when you actually think about Libra, Libra is a scale, right? So let's 
USA. Something like that. So you constantly uh, balancing and weight. So Libra have a tendency to make the fair decision. But when moon is visiting in that decan, and moon is bringing the emotion, moon is bringing the memory, and moon is bringing the compassion into that scale. But how can you make a good decision with emotion, right? So Dave, let's look at the Childian decan to make um, more visual here. As you can see, um, the first decan of Libra is a moon. And in tarot, to make you more understand at the visual, so this person cannot make a decision because the moon is there. Our emotion is tainting the fair decision. Imagine you're a judge and you have to um, make a sentence to own your family member. So your emotion will get into so it will be hard to make a decision so that's why this person has um, the stalemate energy the sword is going into the different direction when you look at this more isolated version so moon is conjuncting here to pressuring us to make decision and this decan is Moon is visiting in this decan and Mercury is sitting on here. So that emotional moon is emphasized here. So way too much emotion is going on here. So my best advice again is do not make a decision yet. And just focusing on this Pisces moon. Pisces is about letting go, letting out ease you know do meditation maybe do some ritual maybe do journaling you know maybe play some music maybe you can um, play dance you know that that's a the really good way to release this tension especially moon is really urging mars to make a decision right after that moon will move continues to move and then when moon moves to libra and by then, we're going to have a new moon in Libra. The new moon energy is really, really fun and interesting. I cannot wait to interpret it um, with you guys with here. So until then, I hope this video will really help you guys understand what's going on. This is really complex energy. However, I'm sure uh, you know what I mean by then. So until then, bye for now.